Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Tradie Business School, the only podcast for trades and general contractors. I'm joined by the amazing Miranda Hill. How are you doing today, Miranda? I am fabulous. How are you, Barry? Fantastic. I'm uh, pretty pumped to talk about today's topic, which is why a business plan is important and how to get started with it. It's a bit of an interesting topic because you know I've been in business for 18 years. And I remember when I very first started, I went through this program with the government mm-hmm. to look at startup funding, which I never got. But part of the process was I had to produce a business plan to kick things off. And, you know, anyone that's ever started a business knows that often they haven't actually got a plan. They've just got a desire to serve someone. They've got an idea of a problem that they're wanting to fix. They certainly don't have 40 pages worth of knowledge. And I remember I went through this painstaking process of creating a 40-page business plan. I ended up find that it sat in the top drawer of my desk and never, ever got referred to or got used. And probably I'm guessing it was almost like doing some university assignment where you go to the library and you copy and paste paragraphs out of the textbooks and fill it in. It's just not relevant. It's just not even, it's not in your words. It doesn't feel like it's a fit, that it's a match. You don't even really even think about your direction you're going. So what a bit of a waste of time. Yet within this, the idea of doing a business plan is still important. And that's what we want to talk to you about today is not that a business plan is not worth doing and that it's going, if you do one, it's going to sit in your drawer. It's why it actually is important and how to go about doing one that works, especially yeah. for a trades business. Yeah, we, we've developed a process over time. There's certain methodologies out there. You have Vern Harnish's Gazelle's methodology, which is called the one-page plan. I'm not sure why it's called a one-page plan because it actually fits on two A4s, but anyway... <laughs> Uh, that's just something that, that messes with my mind. Then you have like uh, Gina Wickman's EOS model, which is uh, also like a two-page plan as well. We tend to kind of use a hybrid of both of these within the game change and certainly amongst our clients as well. And I guess there's three main components, why, what, and how that I want to kind of I want us to break down a little bit for those mm-hmm. that are tuning in today. Before I do that, like I will say this, like like the business plan is something that we we refer to that weekly now. Like when you have things down to a one pager and you and it's synced with, with, with exactly what you need, you will refer to it regularly. And it ties into another episode we recorded around the uh, the six P's of planning, that proper planning prevents piss poor performance. And this is a process that once you nail it, it is actually very, very simple. It works incredibly well for trades, businesses, and general contractors. And it is something you can refer to and ensure that you get your whole entire team around as well. Yeah. I suppose to start, you know, what is a business plan? It's, it, I guess, a strategy, a plan, a map, roadmap towards to help you break down your path towards your future in your business. So rather than just being in your business every day, running it and only doing what's in front of you, uh, maybe making decisions about, you know, capital purchases or making making decisions about hiring uh, without knowing where you're going, then often you can end up in a place. You're like, how did yeah. I get here? So this is all about writing and having a plan that will get you there. Is that it's like, you know, why do I actually need one? You talked about it being a roadmap. Mm. You know, proper planning does prevent piss poor performance. And if you're not first and foremost understanding where you're starting from, where you're going, like see a business plan as a system for the success of your business. Like we talk a lot about systems. It's, it's nothing different than that. That if you know where you're starting from, you know where you're going and you have this very simplistic one to two pages, the same as you'd have a plan to build a kitchen, to install, you know, certain things into a home, to pour a concrete, like all these things, like you guys and girls have plans for the jobs you're doing. This is no different. You've just got a plan for your business. And when you have a very simplistic business plan you can refer to, whenever anything goes off course or even not goes off course, but the end of the month, the quarter, the year, you can refer back to work at have we actually achieved our goals, have we actually moved towards where we want to or not? Because without a plan, you wouldn't be doing that. Now, show of hands for you out there, like who actually has a business plan uh, and one that you refer to on a weekly, monthly or yearly basis? And my assumption would be based on the clients we work in the past, it'd probably be less than 10% of you mm-hmm. that actually have a plan that you're using, an active plan that's in place in your business, which I think is crazy because again, like how are you performing your trades services without a plan in the first place. You have a plan, you have a cladding list, you have an order form for the materials. Like your business is no different than a project you're doing down the road for Mr. and Mrs. Smith. So I guess let's break down very simplistically those three elements we spoke about, why, what, and how. If you want more detail and a detailed approach, there's a couple of ways that you can get that from us. Uh, You're going to need to join the Trading Business School. We take you through the planning process to help you create uh, the blueprint we're going to speak about today. 
Uh, or you could buy my book, The Path to Freedom, which has also got a planning process in there. I think it's in chapter four from memory. Uh, we speak about goals and how to distill them and how to put them in place to ensure that you actually achieve them as well. But let's, I guess, jump into Miranda for the sake of this episode. Like, what are those three components? Like, let's start with why. Like, what do you see is included in why? And why is why important in a business plan? I love that. Good, good dose of why. I love why. So one of the first things that is so important to include in the why is the your vision, your mission, your values. So this is your North Star. It's where you're heading in your business. Now, your vision may be greater than your business or your your vision may, may, and I've, and I've noticed this in a number of our clients, that the vision for now is about their business or it stays within at an industry level. So there's no wrong nor right. It's wherever you're at and wherever your thinking is at for your vision and your business yeah. and but it is about uh, a direction for you it's yeah. where you want to head the place that you want your business to to be in the future at some stage the mission is what you're going to do to get there and, and your values are the behaviors the guiding principles that you will use to get you there so it's the behavior yeah, the of compass. your people the compass yeah yeah so your vision might be simply to provide a steady enough income to support your partner and kids to not have to work more than 40 hours a week. Or it might be something like one of our clients who certainly didn't start there, but their vision is to become the base standard of training for all concreters in Australia and then into the world. Now, again, they didn't start there like often, and I know myself included, you know, my vision to start with was just to get me out of pain and just to get me out of struggle. And as my business started to move to where it was profitable, where I started having more time, where it didn't rely on me as much, it was almost like automatically my vision started to become grander to where it was like, wow, like I actually want to help more people achieve now what I'm achieving. And we see that a lot with our clients. Their vision often starts quite small. Some do come in with these great grand gestures as well, but many of them come in with it quite small. Mm. And once they start to achieve that, it grows into something far bigger. But yeah, your vision is kind of like the sunset. It's something that you can't necessarily catch or reach, but you are always chasing. Your mission, often often we say it's like your 10-year goal. Like it's a big chunk that if I achieve this mission, I'm well on my way to achieving my vision. You so nicely put that you, there are values are basically our guiding principles or our compass that let us know whether we're on course or off course to achieve that vision. And to be honest, our values are far more than that. And it's probably something for another episode, but our values are everything from like, how do we make decisions in the business? How does a business make decisions? We're not there to make it for it. And how do we remunerate, but also have performance conversations with our staff? And it's all based around value. You know, someone doesn't turn up on time. It's not like, oh, you're late. You know, that's your last warning. It's like, hey, how does you showing up right now align with our value of everyone contributes, right? Because right now you're not being a team player. So values are probably at least another whole episode. I've recorded a bunch of podcasts that I wrote in depth in them about, you know, within my book, The Path to Freedom as well. But, but our why is really like, why are we even existing as a business? Like, why is this even important to us? And it's important to set that before we got, jump into, well, well, the what. Mm. And uh, I guess the what is, like some KPIs, you know, like what are some revenue targets that we have? What are some profit targets, some gross profits and net profit? You know, how much cash do we want to have in the bank? You know, regardless of what trades business you're in or business in general, we always recommend to have at least a minimum 10% of your annual turnover as available cash in your business. And if you don't, you're running a very risky business because things can change mighty quickly. So the what is kind of like some core KPIs, usually revenue, gross profit, net profit, cash in bank, it might even be some clear targets, like we want to produce, you know, one kitchen a day, you know, or three kitchens a week, or, uh, you know, we want to have guys at 80% billable per week. There's just some key kind of dot points that you can quickly reference to let you know that you're, you're on your way to achieving the mission and the vision. Yeah. Absolutely. Anything you want to add there, Marina? Yeah, absolutely. I was going to add in there, and I don't know whether uh, this was me once. So anyone out there listening was like, what's a KPI? What does that stand for? So KPI is a key performance indicator. That's the fancy language. Essentially, it's a number you want to reach. There you go. It's a number target. So yep. that's what it is, key performance indicator. So a couple of the other things we can put into the what are your target market or something around your marketing, market and niche. So if you've got your product or service that you are selling out there in your space, that a bit about who you're targeting, who your target market is, and what your products and services are that can fill that space as well. Just at a, at a broad level for your initial part of your business plan. 
So then it's a jumping really into the how, isn't it, Barry? The how to actually yeah, re- re- really nice. To, yeah, this is something I never had in my original plan. Like for me, I had kind of I did have the vision, mission, and values, and then I had just a whole bunch of goals, a list of goals. But the target market is something super important because the often complaint we get from our clients a lot is that they're either having a lot of complaints and going back to jobs, they're not charging enough money, they're attracting tire kickers, they're not winning a lot of quotes, or all, all these different things are very, very simply simply fixed by identifying clearly like who are you going after? What are your three uniques? Like what makes you different to the person down the road? We have a lot of our clients. You'll have like two builders or two plumbers or two carpenters that refer work to each other. And I know a lot of members when they join, they're like, why would I give work to my competition? Hmm. But in actual fact, no one is your competition. The biggest competition we have is the inaction of our prospects. And when you clearly understand who you work for, who your ideal client is, and what makes you unique, you have no issue potentially referring work to other people and referring to you too, because you stay in your lane and there's plenty enough work out there for everyone. So what's your target market? What's your three uniques? And what's the kind of the proven process around how you do what you do time and time again that leaves your clients satisfied and willing to pay you and willing to refer to you? And the last thing I put to there, Miranda, too, that, that often is overlooked is what's your guarantee, mm. right? Something that won me a lot of work when I had my kitchen and bathroom renovation company was a guarantee that I'd put on my work as well. And if you can put a guarantee on there, you can become steps above the rest. Now, this is not a marketing episode, but you so nicely put that the what is some KPIs, the target market you're going after, and painting a bit of a picture around like, what does business look like when we're thriving? What does it look like in three years? What does, what does it look like in a year? And once we've got that, we can jump into the how, which is usually where most people actually start. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got the overall structure. We've got some some bigger picture stuff. We've got our 10-year mission, which is getting a bit more specific about what we're doing. Then we've got a some three-year description about where we'd like to be in three years with some numbers in there, some KPIs and a few measurables, uh, beginning to get a clearer picture of where we would like to be, uh, that three-year horizon. Then we start looking at the 12-month. We set a 12-month goal. It's kind of that line of sight that we can see towards the end of the year and working in a financial year is a great way of going but you know wherever you're at in the year just start and so then we break it down into how so we uh, always use a 90 day cycle and this is what works really really well in the trades and contracting space because it gives us an agility and an ability to pivot if we need to when things come up like they did last year with COVID it enables us to really you know head down tail up and focus so we reverse engineer our 12 month goal so we'll look back and go what are the key milestones we need to reach over those 12 months months to be able to get there. So then we cast our mind to the the quarter that's in front of us at 90 days and you'll list three maximum of five projects that you're going to work on to get you there within that 90 days. So I would probably say for the majority of listeners out there today, one or two or three projects would be the maximum I'd get you to put on there. And a project is a bundle of tasks. It's a bundle of things. So it might be around lead generation or marketing. And within that, there'll be a number of steps that you will write to do to generate leads that might be around, you know, understand my target audience, write my ad posts, those sorts of things around that. So uh, that's how we write our 90-day plans. And we refer the 90-day plans as rocks. So there was an old analogy. It was a professor at Harvard or something, had a glass jar, Mm. and he filled the glass jar with rocks. And he said to the students, is this glass jar full? And they said, well, yes, it is full. And he said, okay. And he got a handful of pebbles out, and he sprinkled pebbles into the jar and rattled it in between the big rocks. He said, is it full now? And they said, well, yes, it is now. And then he got some sand out and he sprinkled sand through the jar and says it full now. And they said, yeah, absolutely is full. And then he got a beer out and he filled the jar with beer. And he's like, now the jar's full. And often the students ask, they say, well, what's the beer for? He said, the beer's to ensure and to remind you that you always have time for friends and family and mates. He's like, but the rocks are the things that are most important to you. And so you always start with your rocks. And business is the same, you know, like we've got this wireframe around why is it important? Because that stuff doesn't really tend to change. You know, you do your work, you get it right. And the first three chapters of my book are dedicated to the wireframe because they're the most important in building a business that can work without you. But then after that, the what is is basically your goals. Like what are those clear targets? Like what are the tangible things we're going for, which allow us to measure on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, you know, three yearly basis to let us know that we're moving towards our why. But what we spoke about now, the how is the rocks. You know, what are the one or two projects that are pushed? Like when we look at our goals, you know, we might be smashing revenue and winning heaps of work, but we're finding that we can't keep up 
with demand. So we might have a rock around creating a really good hiring process. Mm. We might find that we are overstaffed and we haven't got enough work or we're attracting really shitty clients that don't pay on time. So one of our rocks might be to develop a really good lead generation system. And as you put it, Miranda, you know, that's our rock. But then there's a ton of steps under that. It's like we, we've got to do research around who's our niche. You know, who are we going after? What are we actually doing? You know, are we going to run ads on Facebook or on Google? There's a, there's a series of steps, which is why we try to keep those rocks to one to three. Even if you've got a, a larger team, you're better to do those things to completion at 100% than do them half fast and not get the results. And the last thing I'll put is within the how, we want to have an accountability. So within each of those rocks you put down, there needs to be somebody, one person in your organization. And if it's just you, you're a sole trader, one rock is all you need because you're accountable for that. If you have a few team members, you have them accountable for them. Now, that doesn't mean that, that they have to be responsible for completing every single task, but they are accountable to make sure that job, that, that project gets across the line and gets completed. Again, it's something that can be a little bit challenging maybe to, I guess, visualize based on the conversation we have today. And what, what I guess we really wanted to get across is the importance of having a plan that's simplistic, that has those three elements. Uh, even if you don't want to buy a copy of my book or join us in the Trading Business School, just get an A4 bit of paper and, and you know divide it into three, three sections. Why, what, how? You know, what am I going after? Why am I going after it? What am I going after? And how am I going to get there? And start with that process and just find the difference it's going to make in your business to have some clarity and direction. The same way you give your clients when you show them a plan of the landscaping you're going to be doing or the kitchen or the bathroom you're going to be renovating or the house you're going to be building for them. It's, it's the same damn thing. So I love that. The A4 bit of paper, the simplest way to do it, to do that. The thing you've got to do, though, is look at it. Stick it on your forehead, stick it above your computer, put it somewhere that you're going to look at all of the time. Yeah. Time and time again, it's, you know, put in the drawer and goes dusty. Even one page, 40, 40 pages, it doesn't matter. You have to look at it for and follow it for it to work. The reason that it is so important to have a business plan, uh, even if you begin with 12 months and 90 days and then work on the bigger picture stuff after that, to start with where do I want to be in 12 months and what's my first 90 day plan, if that that's as far as, as that's the best at the moment, then I think you're, what you're doing there is doing something that puts you way ahead of most yeah. other businesses. To do Absolutely. that alone is a powerful step. And then look at it every day and follow it. And this is the difference between keeping busy all day, running the hamster wheel of busy business, being reactionary, putting out fires, not wondering, you're wondering why you're not making sort of feel like you're making progress and following this will actually give you that sense of progress completion which is so fundamental to mm -hmm. how we feel in every day uh, it feeds our motivation and just it makes us all round happier yeah. people i think there we go absolutely yeah seek for progress or perfection if nothing else you take from this episode the importance of it and you start with a white bit of paper and draw it up. The whole point is, is to see your business plan like a system, something that you can iterate and you can keep refining until you have something that works well for you. If you do want a proven process, please, uh, my invitation is to join the Trading Business School. We help you to not only go and create this solidly for your business, we teach you every aspect from distilling your vision, your mission, your values, your goals, all the way through to systemizing your business, hiring the right staff, you know, targeting the right target market. We literally take you through everything that it's going to take to build a wildly profitable trades or contractor business that can actually work without you. Whether you choose to work in it or not, it will absolutely work without you. We've done it time and time again. So my invitation is to uh, click on a link somewhere around this video to uh, have a chat to the team about joining the Trade Business School or the easier, cheaper, I say easier options to buy my book, but it's a lot harder in the sense that you have to go and implement what you read as well. So look, smart people spend money to save time and stupid people spend time to save money. Take that to your clients. Look forward to seeing you guys in the next show. Miranda, thanks so much for your time today. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye.